Yeah, because we've got to get to game two now too. And another small map. Another small map. Well, it's, it's, it's like the two, for me, what I love the two best maps for Zerg play. Short short distance to actually go. You'd run them straight across there and creep Chimas or Galore. And uh, on this map, it's a lot easier for the Zerg to actually go for that easy expansion. Um, because that back door is always something to keep your eye on. But it's not that hard for Glade once he gets the creep Chimas out. Just move himself around. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing how Count we actually approaches this. Well, uh, to be honest, I think we're going to see some extreme aggression with four walk gate kind of thing coming from Kelly. This map is amazing for four walk gates kind of stuff because you have both entrances. The the main way that that Zerg really kind of stop four walk gate is mass sky crawlers. And if you got two entrances, well, there goes that mass sky crawler idea. So I am ready to go in this matchup. Are you ready, Toby? I am ready. Count us down. All right. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. And I'm going to start up my little record here. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to have game two here between Cowie and Moonglade for the Western Digital Cystorm 2010 event brought to us by cybergamer.com.au. Five grand on the line in this entire tournament. 1750 for <clears throat> for the final and the first place winner. And Moonglade here, we are on... We are on Blistering Sands. Moonglade saying that was a good battle. It was neck and neck. <laughs> Kelly's saying it's like hitting Bull Rush. Bull Rush <laughs> oh my god, that is insane. But we are going to have PVZ, Blistering Sands, and I'm joined, of course, once again by Toby Wan. What do you think we're going to see this time, mate? Well, you, you, you're talking about the four gate rush this time around. I don't know if Cowie's going, going to be that aggressive, but we will find out. We will definitely not see a six pull or five pull here from, from Glade. That was, you're right, last time he was just screwing with Cowie's head um, to make him think about it next time. And because now Cowie, well, we've got the pylon down. Look to see the gateway come into production very, very soon as well. He's actually delaying it off a little bit, just pumping out the probes a little bit further here. So, uh... Maybe he's, maybe he's actually calling the bluff of Glade from the first game and going, yep, you know, I know you're not going to do that one again. Now the gate, gate goes down at 12, and uh, Spawn Pool still on the way here as uh, Glade, he's going Extractor. Um, actually going straight for gas before he even goes for the pool. Yes. And keeping all, all his drones on minerals, so maybe expansion? What are we talking about? No, no, what we're going to see is a spawning pool come down as soon as he has the cash here. He's sitting about 140 uh, minerals. It's a classic speedling build coming in here. Uh, it is also a quite powerful uh, fire roach rush, which is a strategy that's discussed quite a bit on Team Liquid. Very strong. We saw that ability be used greatly by Just in Time versus Pinder, causing a bit of a rage there and uh, chair throwing by Pinder as well uh, in the very first round of this tournament. But Glade just being a pain here. Oh my God, Cloud, we got this around on the drone. That is going to be a huge mental blow, blow to Glade and also going to shut down all his scouting. <laughs> as Glade does have a sad face there as well. Oh my God. Uh, th th that one drone, we've seen how much trouble Glade can actually cause with that one. I think there was a match uh, last night um, where he made it to actually scan out the expansion, not only just uh, storing the gas twice, I think it was over. It's just one drone with Glade can do so much damage, and can we br bring it down already? No, no scouting, no vision whatsoever for Glade, and he has no idea what Cowie has in store for him, which at the moment is just a gateway and a side next core on the way. And you're right, there's, there's the um, metab metabolic boost actually coming out on the uh, spawning pool. A couple of lings on the way, only four of them at the moment, uh, but it won't be long before there'll be more. Yeah, um, they are a bit later. Cowie does not have his full wall off yet. He does have his first yard on the way, though. Like I was saying before, he pulled, Moonglade pulled all his drones out of that extractor the second he had 100 gas just to deal with that. And here we go. Lings are going to be able to take out this probe scout. And his drone's already down here waiting for the cash to make that expansion. There we go. So expansion is down for Moonglade. It is going to be on 18 supply with a queen just popping now from his main hatchery. Uh, still no real idea what we're going to be seeing from Cowie. He does have the second assimilator. And he does throw down a second gateway now. So this is pretty standard cookie cutter stuff from him. He can really transition into whatever the hell he wants from here on. He's getting that uh, sentry as well. So some nice force fields. Uh, but really, it's just going to be up to uh, what they feel like doing. Two probes, he's going to get caught out of position, I think. Or can we? No, he does have a poxy pylon in the base, though, that Glade has not seen yet. Unfortunately, this is going to be a big game changer if they don't see it. If he doesn't see it, oh, my God. <laughs> he can't see it. No, he can't. He hasn't seen it yet. Warp Gate Research is about 60% of the way if that finishes. And we have a lot of gateways coming out from Cowie, which we do see. We do see the four Warp Gates. Oh, my God. This game could be over very, very shortly. 
It could be, and he's got that perfect wall up. There's no way the Lynx can actually even harass him off here. And, uh, well, Glade is now with the Speedlings. Uh, Speedlings done. He's, he's literally covering the entire map with, like, five different squads of Lynx moving themselves out. The creep's gone down south. I think the only hope Glade has currently got is, I'm sorry, one random overlord that's going to head up there, head up towards the west. That's the only way he's going to get it. But even then, his next one's not actually... Oh, he's actually surrounded the sentry! That is huge! That's going to stop oh. anything coming in. He does see the three warp gates. The warp research isn't done yet, though. It's just about to finish then. Oh, my God. This is going to be huge. Dock is up as well, so they're really the county <laughs> defending out. That pylon's actually going to take a fall as well. It's a good It's a good thing there's another one there keeping the energy in the area. As uh, the, <laughs> the sentry and stalker doing whatever they can. One gateway still getting harassed up. The warp gates are up. He hasn't now. The warp is actually coming in up on the high. Two zealots is going to be what's going to come in behind. The lings getting around the back there. Fantastic block by the sentry and stalker. Just trying to hold that front lines off. Zealots warping in behind as well to deal with these lings. And uh, now the two, the two zealots going to make an approach here on Glaze main base and uh, well the queen will be there for the defense but uh, how many probes is he actually going to claim from this from these kills from this life moment but the lings are right up there get us around on one zealot so one zealot's about to go down and uh, oh there comes the rest of the lings the surprise is over he's uh, got one stalker and one sentry up there warping in zealots nice and fast he's got to get everything in there good shield to try and split up those links so they can't do the mass damage to them and uh, well stalker down sentry still up one zealot goes down two more links being pumped in from glade he does not want this pylon in Inside his base, the, the attack on uh, Cowie's base has ended, but um, with that pylon about to go down, the surprise is over, and Cowie's now got to do it the hard way. Yeah, definitely. He's also supply capped from that 36 over 34. Moonglade in a great position right now. If we have a look here, he does have quite a few links on the way, uh, but this Sim City of Cowie is really dominant. He is getting a fifth gateway, so he, this is going to be an all in from him here. Uh, Moonglade now is recognizing that he's got that. He wants to try and get a couple of spine crawlers down, but I don't think he cares. I think he wants to go for the win right now. Getting a Roach Warren down, spreading his creep nicely done by Moonglade. But he is continuing to pump the drones every now and then. If we have a look at the income tab, we're looking at 26 harvesters for Cowie and 21 for Moonglade. But he does have that expansion up. And we've got a push out here from Cowie. That is a deadly, deadly force with sentries and zealots there. But the timing's bad. The timing's... Look, look at the second entrance. Destructible rocks. Uh, the lings are trying to hit away, even though they've got very, very small attack um, at the moment. But uh, if Cowie's force gets caught out here, those lings are going to completely demolish Cowie's base. And uh, I think I think it will. You can warp in as many units as you possibly want, but the timing of this push is going to be the best oh thing. Oh, God. Moonglade who... running up. He sees what's coming. Oh, great game sense by Moonglade. Going to go for those two Zelnaga Towers. There's lots of lings coming in. Take it away, Toby. What are we going to see? Oh, they're going to come right in the top there. The shields go off. They're trying to actually split up the lings on, but they didn't get it off in time. The shield's not up. The complete surround is on Cowie's forces. Who can bring down first, though? There are a lot of lings really getting on top of Cowie, but the pylon will allow him to bring in more reinforcements. Stalker's Stork actually walking all the way in now. Zealot's coming up as well. The uh, lings will actually leave that battle. They know with the pylon there, the reinforcements will come, and now will be the time for Cowie to actually... Actually, he, he might be able to push in, or he might have to run himself back there. Glade, not quite sure he wants to attack with that little ling army. And Cowie can bring those reinforcements in so, so fast with the warp gates, even though they're all currently on cooldown. No, we've got two up radar, actually, drop units. Cowie going to go in through the destructible rocks on the second entrance. The question is, does Glade know it's coming? One Ling going in once again for the tower to get a little bit of vision, but uh, the, un the units from Cowie still warping in. Another stalker coming in towards the mix. They really want these destructible rocks, and they could make one hell of a hole in Glade's base. But even then, the creep tumors on the way across, Glade wants to know the second they're going to get through, which is only going to be in just a second. Yeah, you can get the <laughs> Nazareth player on that creep, and here comes Cowie, but really, I don't think he's going to be in a good position. He does have two sentries with a bit of energy, but there's a Roach and Ling mix now, and here we go from Glade. We're going to get a good surround. Oh, my God, a perfect surround here by Glade with the Queen beating on as well. These Roaches just dropping the Zealoth so damn quickly. We have a look at the health here. All the Zealoth on low health. So many Roaches still in there. This is going to be, God, just perfect defense by Glade. Is he going to lose the Queen? Oh my god, 2 HP, how the hell did that live? <laughs> <laughs> the Zealot's just too slow. And the creep, it just gives him the extra little bit of speed. You also notice Cowie tried to drop down that pylon inside the base and bring in the reinforcements. He had to do it on the other side of the grassy knoll. Causes that creep tumor just stopping everything. Now the uh, Roach is trying to actually have a bit of a crack here again. Links on the front lines. Great shields off. They should be able to take care of all of those links on this side. Glade spots off the tower as well. Takes out the probe, which uh, probably wasn't what Cowie actually wanted. Uh, and the pylon will take the fall. Yeah, Shields just holding them off. But Roach, you can't push it. You can't push that.
No, pretty much uh, Glade has defended this four gate at every step of the turn. Cowie is now getting a little bit mined out here in his main. He's stopped it for producing probes. He's got a 100 Chrono Boost. But in the meantime, Moonglade constantly pumping more roaches and lings, getting a drone here and there. This could be game over every second. If, if Cowie doesn't take this one out, it's going to be game over. He needs to win right here. It's all down to this one. He's actually managed to bait off the roaches a little bit here. The shield's going off. The swarm once again coming in. And the lings have actually managed to pull up the stalkers up high. Fantastic micro from Cowie though. Try to actually focus fire on not only the links, but he's like, yeah, there is nothing he can do. There were too much, too much energy coming through the roaches, and uh, the links are surrounding them on giving the stalkers harassment, restricting their movements. And uh, the GG call comes out, and Glade takes it two to nil. Who would have expected that? No, that was great play by Glade. That is going to be GG 2-0 for Glade in the Sci Storm upper bracket semi-final, as well as technically the Nation Wars ace match. So Australia takes through the entire Nation War League without dropping a single week. So that is always good to hear. <laughs> but in the meantime, Cowie will be dropped down in the lower bracket, which is unfortunate as well. So let's jump out. Let's have a quick chat to Dell, see which match, match up is up next.